now that we've um, created the models and controllers and views, we're going to do some modification. We're just going to do some simple modification, but it's going to be a little bit complex as we try to follow what's going through. And if this is your first time through this, it might seem a little confusing. In fact, I get confused and lost all the time. Let's start from the beginning. Here we are at our main page. The view is site index. Okay, so the view is under views. We'd expect to see a folder with site and a PHP file index. Okay, I, this is the same because it's set up as the default as if I was came directly here. But let's look at where site index and what it says here. Here we go. We got controllers, models, layouts. Under views, we've got site index. That's this file right here. It starts setting things up, including the page title that we changed. And then it loads this one layout file called main. This get layout file main. So we're going to close this. And the reason I'm going to look at this is because I want to look at here in the layout main. I want to look at how we get to the logout. That's this right here. That is what I am looking for. How is this, which you could see is site login, how is that set up? Here in main, we have some other things that are set up, but here is where the menu is set up with this widget, the Z widget, Z menu. Here we have all of the menu items. We have both login and logout, but obviously they're not both visible. Login is visible when in the eApp, the user is a guest. And logout is visible when not in the eApp, user is a guest. That makes sense. We also add this other parameter. So we have the word logout. And then we also have in uh, these open brackets, we have the eApp, the user name. Okay, and that's what we'll expect to see. But the whole idea is I click on login and it goes to site log I'm sorry site login well where does that really take us well it takes us up to the controller and we'll close this hopefully we won't need to come back to that and we go up to the controller and we're looking we're gonna look for login and there it is the login and the first thing that it does is it says hey we're gonna create a new model login form Okay, well, let's go to our models, login form. There it is. And in login form, I have these variables, username, password, and remember me, we're just going to look at the username and password for now. Okay, and then I've got these rules. It's essentially saying that username and password are both required. Again, going quickly. We have this function here called login and login will say well this identity which was a private variable up there is equal to a new user identity and I'm gonna pass it the username and password well, where's user identity we looked at that before and that was actually a component that had been loaded right here and user identity extends this class so you don't need to see everything it's just an extension of that class but right here we have authenticate and this is where we're going to authenticate the user. In this case, the default is I'm just going to give you two users, demo and admin. And that's it. Well, we're going to change that. We're going to say, well, I want you to look it up in the database. First, we'll delete this code. But we'll look and we'll say, what is it really doing? All it is is returning a value. It's returning error code. Now, if it finds the username, uh, if it doesn't find the username, in other words, if it's not set, then return error username invalid. If it says that the username does not match to password, error password invalid. Else, there is no error and return that. Very, very simple here. We're going to delete this code and add some other code and do the same thing. I replaced it with this code. Now, I have a variable here. The dollar sign, of course, is a PHP variable. And I'm saying, uh, give me an instance of this class, uh, this user's model. Now, this was the user's model that was created by the G tool. And it's just an extension of C Active Record, which just gives us the ability to access the database. 
you don't see this function find at all because it's uh, built into the C Active record and I haven't modified that at all. Find by attributes. And I need to pass it an array with a key and a value. This value came from C login form, this username. The key in the database is username. If I had given it something else, like the, the user's name or something, I'd have to change that. So I, in a sense, I'm saying here is go look in the database. This model will tell you what table to look in. And look for this username field and see if we can find that. Now, it's a primary key, so there should only be one. If the record is null, then we return the error username invalid. If the record else we want, we want to do is we want to say get the password. Now I've passed, got the whole record here. So I've got the password, I've got the ID, I've got the date created, I've got everything here. But tell me if the password is equal to this password. If it's not equal to this password, then return error password invalid. And if both of those fail, then return error none. Okay, so actually I'm just setting the error code and at the very end I return that error code. And so let's watch it um, in action here. Okay, so now we're back to this page and if I click login here, this is the form. We haven't changed any of this. Now admin, admin was the default. And if I logged in here, you can see it logged me in as admin. Now the menu has changed to log out. That login menu is not visible and it has the user here. Well, why did that work? Well, because I haven't saved my changes. I'll go over to here and hit my save. Now when I log in, admin, admin, I didn't change that. I'll log in, it says, uh, yeah, incorrect username or password. Now I remember my username is Kurt Lyman. My password, I can log in. And it takes me back to here, it says log out Kurt Clement. Let me go ahead and log out and uh, do something funky here just to make sure it works. Let's say that I say that my login is admin and I'm going to say it's uh, 123. Incorrect username and password. Now let's do this. I wouldn't recommend this normally, but we're going we're gonna to do this just to show how this all works. PHP my admin. Go to the My Password Manager database. We will go to the users. I only got one user, Kurt Clement, my password. So let's insert. I'm going to say the username is admin. Password is 123. I have to fill all these, they're all these required. So I'll say now. It'll give me the current timestamp. I'm going to say that you are an admin. Here we go. So now when I browse the database, I see that I've also got this admin123. So now if I go back to here and I try to log in, I haven't changed anything to the um, app at all. All I did is made a database change. When I log in, it works. It says I'm logged in. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about these passwords here. Now this is, sometimes you want to keep these in full text form, but normally you don't. And so we'll introduce uh, the creation of a password with the basic PHP crypt. The last step is for me to commit these changes. The only file that I see was changed was my protected components user identity.php. And all I did was change this authenticate function. I deleted this part and added this part. That's the only changes we've made. I'll stage those changes. Right. Change authentication to data base. Okay. Thank you.